to another episode of Going Crazy at Home with Pastor John. I'm so happy you guys decided to take some time out to hang out with me today. Today we have something really, really important to talk about. But we're still going to have fun and we're going to be silly like we usually are. I do want to take today a little bit more serious because today is a really important day. You know how we've been building up and thinking about the best holiday ever in Easter where Jesus rose from the dead and we're forgiven for our sins. We're celebrating all of that. Well, and we've been looking at Jesus' life and all the amazing things he did. Well, all of that leads up onto this day. And this day is called Good Friday. And on Good Friday, that's the day that Jesus was, after he was betrayed and everything, this is the day that he was put on the cross and he died for our sins. And it's called Good Friday for a reason, and we're going to be talking about that. But the whole reason that Jesus had to die for our sins was because we do them. We all have sinned. We've all messed up. So before we get into everything today, I want us to think about a few things. I want us to think about ways that maybe in our life we don't appreciate God enough. And I want us to think about a few sins that we may have committed. And maybe the ones that we just kind of keep committing that we, we mess up with a lot, right? Because I know for a fact that every single one of us, we have things that we struggle with. We maybe get angry a little too easy. Or maybe we don't listen to mom and dad well enough. Or, you know, <clears throat> we're mean to our brother or sister, whoever, whatever it is. Or maybe we get jealous or we have a tough time sharing. Whatever it is. There's tons of examples. And trust me, Pastor John has done them all. We've all messed up like that. But I want us to take a few seconds just to think about a few sins, a few things that, you know what? You sit back and you go, you know what? I, I need to be forgiven for this. I want you guys to think about it while my friends give you some of their answers. Uh, yeah, I got a big one. Remember the other day when I thought I could do anything I want and just be forgiven and that was okay and I wanted to eat your shoe? Um, well, let's just say I know where the shoe is that you've been looking for and um, you're not going to like how it looks because um, I ate it. So, I'm sorry. Um, yes, well, um, I suppose I have crimes to fess up to as well. You see, while he was eating one half of the shoe, I may or may not have been eating the other half. So, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I watched them eat it. It was pretty funny. But, um, you know, I didn't eat it. So, you know, as usual, cat is still perfect. What do you think we just get rid of these cinnamon dogs? Well, at least I know where my shoe is now. Gotta think on the bright side. And uh, sorry, Quill, if you're watching a sin happening and not doing anything about it, it's the same thing as doing it. And all sins equal. So if you want to get rid of them for committing those sins, then I'd have to get rid of you too. But the reality is, is I'm never going to do that because I love you guys. And I commit sins too. I mess up. I'm not perfect. You guys aren't perfect. Nobody's perfect. And we know that. We know that we sin. We know that we need a forgiveness of our sin. But today I want us to really try and understand, one, what Jesus was feeling and what he was going through. Just really put ourselves in his shoes today so we can really appreciate everything that he did. Because it's one thing to hear about it and know what he did, but it's another thing to try and really try to like, experience it for ourselves and understand what he went through. And it makes us appreciate it so much more. And two, I want us to truly understand how much we needed it and what kind of position that we'd be in without it. You see, on Good Friday, we think about a lot of things. We think about the Last Supper, where we Jesus broke the bread and poured the wine to help the disciples understand what he was going through and what the gift we were receiving from it. And that's the reason we have communion, right guys? Like on communion, when we're upstairs with our, our parents, right, on Sundays, what do we do? We have the little thing of juice and we have the crackers, right? And what does the crackers represent? Yell it out. Yell it out. The crackers represent Jesus' body, right? Because Jesus on that day took a loaf of bread and he ripped it apart. He broke it. He ripped it apart and he handed it to the disciples. I said, the same way this bread is breaking, that's how my body's going to break for you. That's, this is what, literally what my body's going to go through for you. And then he took the juice, right? He poured it out in the cups. 
right? He says, see the way that, see our guys ever pour a big thing of juice into a cup? The same way that juice pours out of that bottle, the same way that his blood was going to be pouring for you. And he was explaining to them what he was going to go through, what was going to happen. And the reason that we take communion is we're remembering Good Friday. We're remembering what he did and what, what he went through for us. That's how important communion is and how, um, how serious we should take it. So Jesus was going through all of that. And you guys remember what happened, how he got arrested? Does anyone remember who betrayed him, what his name was? Anyone? Judas, right? Now picture this, guys. Now we all know he betrayed him. Did you guys know that he was one of Jesus' disciples? Which means that he was one of his friends. He was somebody that Jesus kept close. Imagine someone that you keep close. Imagine a really good friend betraying you and selling you out for some money. Could you imagine how much that hurt? What kind of feeling that was? That's what Jesus was going through. Jesus had a friend betray him. Jesus had a friend sell him away for some money to his enemies. I can't imagine how much that would hurt. And Jesus knew everything that he was going to go through. You see that the night before he was betrayed, or the night when he was being betrayed, he was gonna get arrested. He was in the garden, he was on his knees, just asking God, if there's any way I don't have to go through this, take it away, please. Because he was, he was scared, right, of all the things that he was about to go through. But he said, you know, if not, then he's ready to do what he has to do. But, you know, if there was any other way, he, he would have rather that, I'm sure. But he still knew what he had to do. And even after his friend betrayed him and the people that he came to save, imagine... Imagine trying to help somebody, going out of your way to help somebody, and then that person turns around and hurts you. And all you were trying to do is help. And if you think about it, that's what happened to Jesus. Jesus came down to help all of us. Jesus came down to love on us, to teach us about, about who God is and who he is and how we can be saved. And those very people that he was coming to save, the coming to help, were the people that betrayed him. He loved the people that were betraying him. He was still trying to help the people that betrayed him, that hurt him, that wanted to crucify him. He wanted to teach them the right way. And that's what they did. That's what they, they put him through. And then they tortured him. Not even right before the cross, being put on the cross, they tortured him and beat him to the point where like, people, the, it's, you couldn't even recognize Jesus, that his face and everything was so beaten you couldn't even recognize him. I want you guys to sit and really think about this. And really just take a second to put yourself in Jesus' shoes. And everything that Jesus went through. And remember that he did it for you. Now, still remember that this is a good Friday. Because, because of what he went through. Even though it's horrible things were happening to him. Even though I couldn't even imagine going through it myself. It probably would be... It would be definitely the worst thing that could ever happen to me. We still call it a Good Friday because of why Jesus was doing it. Because of what we were freed from. So I think we're going to take a walk. I'm going to take a walk. And we're just going to talk about how much we needed it. And what kind of position we'd be in if Jesus didn't go through Good Friday. If Jesus didn't allow himself to be put on a cross. He didn't allow himself not only to be betrayed by a friend, not only to be hurt by the people that he came to save, to love. He was even made fun of. You know that they put a, a crown of thorns on his head to mock, because he obviously he's king, right? And he said, you know, that I, you know, I created, I, I'm king. I'm king, you know, and king of the Jews. He's king of the world, right? That's what Jesus is. And they mocked that. They put a crown on his, on his head and said, Go ahead, King of the Jews, free yourself, free yourself. When he was up on the cross, they were saying, get yourself down, King of the Jews. Could you imagine that, being made fun of like that? I mean, I've been made fun of in my life, and I know it doesn't feel good. And the fact that Jesus still went through all of that and knew he was going to go through every single thing that happened to him, and he still did it for us, guys, we really need to take a second and say, you know what? Jesus is pretty amazing. What? Uh, the cat has something to say. I'm, I'm hoping it's good. Um, yeah, uh...
I gotta say, this really puts things in perspective, like, how could Judas do that to Jesus? Like, I wouldn't even do that. To someone like Jesus? That's just, that's just so messed up. I can't believe Jesus went through that. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I'd sell you for a bag of catnip, like, in a second. Like, wouldn't even think about it. But Jesus, man, that's just a different story. You know, when you put that in perspective, that was actually one of the best things he's ever said. Even if he'd sell me for a bag of catnip. But you know what? I kind of expected it, so it really didn't hurt that much. All right, so me and Hooper are going to go on for a walk, and I want you guys to come with me. Let's go. Walk? Yeah, you ready to go for a walk? You're giving me a walk. Right, let's go. What about you, Cat? You want to go for a walk? No. No? Not yet. Yeah, I kind of figured. All right, fine. Let's go. All right, so as you can see, me and Hoopy, we decided to take a walk on just one of the most beautiful days ever, right? So uh, we just had to get out of the house, though, because Hoopy, he was going a little stir crazy, right, Hoopy? Oh, yeah, old boy, I'm walking. Uh, yep. All right, see, so he just had to get out. I had to get out. So I figured we'd take a walk and continue talking about what we've been talking about. So, oh man, it's what? so awesome being outside. Yes. Oh my I, gosh, you I, I smell know. that? Oh, it's it so smells. good. I love being outside. Look at all the uh, leaves. Oh, yep, I love the leaves. leaves. <gasps> I wonder if they're any squirrels. squirrels. I wonder if yeah. I can catch any squirrels. There's probably so many out here. I wonder if I can catch them more. All right, come oh, on. Be so all right, focus up. Oh, wait, oh. Gotta take this serious. Oh, okay, all okay? Right. this is important what we're talking about. So, we've been talking about how we've all sinned, right? And what Jesus went through. And we're trying to put ourselves in Jesus' shoes. So, now I want to focus in on a little bit of how much we needed it. Remember how we talked about last week about how God is just? Well, right, so God is just, then people needed to pay for the sins they committed, right? We all broke the law. We've all broken the law. We've all fallen short of God. We've all done something wrong. And if we're being honest, we've done a lot of things wrong. We, keep, we always mess up. We always have things going on. And it's kind of like this. All right, guys, take a look at this water. I want you guys to imagine that every sin that you've committed or you're going to do in your life is a drop of water. If we're being honest, all of those sins would probably fill up like this amount of water, probably be like about this much. In life, it's kind of like we're in the middle of that water that all of our sins have created. And we're kind of stuck in the middle of like, imagine something like this. Now, if you were by yourself and you were just stuck in the middle of that water and you were trying to keep yourself afloat, trying to keep yourself from going under, you probably wouldn't be able to do it on your own. Actually, you definitely couldn't because at some point you get, you get tired. You see, Jesus saw that we weren't going to be able to do it on our own. So he took the pain and he took the blame for our sins so that he could be a savior to us. So he could be like a boat. Imagine if a boat came out of nowhere and you had the choice to either get on that boat or stay, on, stay out there by yourself. You choose to get on that boat. Because that's your only way to keep yourself and get yourself away from all that sin and away from that water. That's what we have because of what Jesus did on Good Friday. And that's how important it was. So, now that we put ourselves in Jesus' shoes and we see why Jesus had to do it and why we needed it so much, we can truly appreciate and get ourselves ready for what Sunday is and Easter. But today I want you guys to truly appreciate and think about what Jesus did for you. The pain that he went through, the the mocking, the being made fun of, and understand why he had to do it. Because he loves you so much and he didn't want to let you, he didn't want to leave you out there drowning in your sins. He wanted to provide you a way to make you, be, to make you safe and to be with him. To be able to get to cross the other side and spend all of eternity with him. That's why Good Friday is so good. So today I want you guys to really focus on how good today is. How good of a Good Friday it is. We're going to take a look at our scripture, and I want to finish up for today. Well, I suppose since you didn't take me on the afternoon stroll, then let me say the scripture is the least you can do. Today's scripture is, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. First Peter 2.24 Listen, I can only take one. I only have two hands and the other one for the camera. Next time, buddy. All right. But thanks for doing the scripture. All right. So that's today's memory verse for today. I want you guys to memorize that verse. We're going to read it one more time. I'm going to put up on the screen for you guys to read. Ready? He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we, he, we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. First Peter 2.24. So what's that scripture saying? 
that scripture is a reminder to us that that Jesus bore, meaning he took our sins, he put them on himself on that cross. So when he was being killed, it was like our sins were being killed. It was like we were dying to our sins. And to live for righteousness means to live for God, for righteousness. And then by his wounds, we've been healed. Because of what he went through, because of all the torture he went through, that he that he took, we're healed. We're healed from the sin, the disease that's called sin. And that's what the cross is. And that's what the scripture reminds us of, is that he took our sins. And because of that, we are healed. And that's what that scripture reminds us of. So today, instead of playing a game, now normally every single time we're going to play a game or do worship, one or the other. Today I want to do something a little different. Since it is a little more serious, today I want you guys to take the time that we would worship or we would play the game, and I want you to pray with whoever you're with. I want you guys to take a second, just pray to God. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, I encourage you guys to ask Jesus into your heart. And all you got to do to do that is say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for your dying for my sins. Please come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Be my best friend. Amen. That's all you got to do for Jesus to come into your heart, for you to accept the gift that he gave us when he died on that cross. And if you've already done that, what I want you guys to do is just take some time with whoever you're with. I want each of you to take turns praying. Please, I challenge you, pray. Take some time to pray and just say whatever you got to do. Take a few minutes just to say thank you to God. Tell him how much you love him. Take a few minutes on this Good Friday to tell Jesus thank you for this awesome holiday. Thank you for this awesome Friday where you gave your life for me. All right, guys, take a few minutes. All right, and I will see you guys on Sunday. See you later.